explain how a satellite may be in a circular orbit around a planet. You know, a circular orbit really means this picture like this. Okay, got a big fat planet here, got a tiny little satellite. It can be a small moon, a chunk of rock, could be anything. How do they do that? You got to know that the big mass and the tiny mass that is going around the big mass, they are attracted to each other called through this thing called gravitational force of attraction. This is Newton's second law. And when there is a force that allows you to move in a circular path, oh, this is really too big. Yeah, something like that, yeah. If that force is pulling you just right, that's a centripetal force. That's how you get a circular orbit. So we're going to say who provides centripetal force, our favorite sentence, who provides. So you say gravitational force. Gravitational force. Maybe it's good to also say gravitational force of attraction. If you want to add in a little note between, since we're talking about satellite, so we say the satellite and the planet. So this force of attraction provides centripetal force. Oh, that is a very important sentence. Who provides centripetal force? Gravitational force provides centripetal force. You want to say on satellite? Sure, let's add that in. On satellite. So the main idea is the most important way is you want to say gravitational force provides centripetal force. So this is the first one idea about gravitational force. And the second one is who provides centripetal force. That's the second point in this kind of uh, question. So now we go to the scenario here. Oh, very interesting. What is this? Earth and the moon. Okay, so we have Earth and our nice moon that goes round and round. Uniform spheres isolated in space. Isolated means no other forces. Lah. So Earth has radius, mean density. Moon has mass, M. Where's our moon? Ah, here, M. And it goes around in a circular orbit at a radius n times r. The moon makes one complete orbit in time t. Show that the density of the Earth is given by this expression. <gasps> okay, okay. If they, they ask you to show and show and show, you have to know the first sentence you need to ask yourself is, who provides centripetal force? Like what we answered just now. Who provides centripetal force? Gravitational force. F, G. With that in mind, ah, then now we can say, all right, this thing is going to become our first equation. F, G equals to F, C. You're like, miss, but how do we go from here to here? Never mind, we step by step, we try to plug in everything we know. At least you should get two marks for just plugging in. So this one is going to be G, M, M over R squared, just generic equation. Uh, Centripetal force, uh, mv square over r. Hey, wait, wait, wait. There's two equations. Should we use mv square over r? Or should we use mr omega square? It really depends on what you want to find. Here you see there's time involved. Time is related to angular velocity. So it's better to use the this one, uh, mr omega square. So let's, let's just write it down then. mr omega square. Okay. So we have a moon that is moving in a circle thanks to a gravitational force that pulls it towards the center. Okay, now we need to plug in everything we know into the equation over there. So G, M, 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 all this M, we don't know. Ah, M and M can cancel out. The mass of the satellite, the small M, is gone. Eh, radius is what? Ah? What is the R here? The R refers to the radius of orbit, which is our NR. This is really called orbit radius. So we could level up our equation here a bit to become gm over radius of orbit, uh, nr square equals to r here is going to be n times r times omega square. There, we sum in the main things we know. I guess we could keep going. All right. So now you need to introduce time, t, and that can be done by omega equals to 2 pi over t. But there's one more thing. We need to introduce density into the equation. Somehow there is no mass here. So you think of thinking, mm, earth, ah, earth. What is earth? Oh, remember our equation from AS? Density equals to mass of the earth over the volume of the earth. 
So, we could substitute away our mass by multiplying density times volume, and this is a sphere, right? So for a sphere, mass equals to density times 4 over 3 pi r cubed. This is a den uh, the mass of our planet Earth in terms of its density. So yes, this is a good side note to add in into our derivation on the left side. So let's add in all those things inside. And we will get G... Oh, no space there already. Okay, let me write here in the middle. G mass is what? Rho 4 over 3 pi r cubed over n r square. Okay, la, n square r square. La. Let's put it there. Then the, on the right side is nr times omega square, which is 2 pi over t. Actually, let's write it here. Ah, yeah. Then save one step. 2 pi over t square. Mm. Then here I can just write 4 pi square over t square. Nice. Okay. So the last thing you need to do is rearrange for our density rho. Oh, how do you rearrange this thing? Well, okay, let's let's try cancel out things here and there. So the very first one is our nr. So if I divide both sides by r, okay, this r is gone. Oops, cancel a bit too much. This r is gone. r cubed over r squared divided by r some more. All these r's are now gone. You can slowly go and rearrange lah. Uh, n, how about n? n will still be there. Okay, it become n cubed. So let's write it out then. So this will be giving us density equals to... Let's, let's draw a nice table here. What's up there? 4 pi square n cubed. Because there's also another n on this side. Combine them together. Do some algebra. And what else we have here? So far so good. Okay, so we keep the t square down there. And everything else we move over to this side. So you have g... Uh, 3 over 4 and pi. Where is pi going to go? Oh, there's a pi down here also. Mm, okay. And lastly, the n square that comes up up here. Cute. Okay. Use whatever method you will. But at the end of the day, you should get... Let's see what else cancel out. 4 and 4 is gone. Pi and pi. So you have... 3 pi n cubed over g t squared. Done. Is that the original? Yes. Okay. So, 100% of the time, whenever they ask you to prove something in circular motion, you have to start with your fg equals to fc, which is the one on the left side. So, there's two marks for this one, three marks. If you equate your fc equals to fg, something like this, this is an m1 mark for equating both of this. GMM over R square equals M R omega. Then if you know that, oh, omega is 2 pi over T, this one is another mark for realizing that. And lastly, if you manage to solve through the end and proof, rearrange everything, then you get A1. So rearrange to show that you got the answer. There. That's one, two, three. There's one more mark missing. Where is it? Ah, so one mark is knowing that the mass is density times volume and substituting all the correct equations, this is B1. Ah, that was correct. Four marks in total. One, two, three, four. Okay, it's pretty long, huh? This show question. Just remember, you start with this, okay? FG equals FC. Substitute, rearrange. Substitute, rearrange. Most of it is like that one. Okay, next part. The radius of the Earth now is given to us R. And the distance between center of the Earth and the center of the Moon is this thing. That is what they gave us as NR in the diagram. The period of the moon is 27.3 days, is our T, and use the expression to calculate P. Okay, if we didn't get to prove this, it's okay because we can just take the equation right here and continue using it down there. So let's write it out, maybe. So we have density equals to 3 pi n cubed over gt squared. Wait, there's something we don't know. N. Why they give us R? We don't know N. This is where we got to do some ratio a bit. They give us R and NR. So we go to this diagram. R, R 
R is radius of the earth. This is given to be 6.38 times 10 to the 3. N R is several times of this. And R don't know how many times, but this is given to be 3.84 times 10 to the 5. So this is just a factor. La. If you want to find N, you take N R divided by R. Cancel out, you'll get your N. Okay, let's do it. I like it. So let's write it down here la, to keep the working together. So this is kind of a side working. If you want to find N, you need to take N R divided by R. So this will cancel out and give you N. But what is the value of N R? 3.84 times 10 to the 5 kilometer. I can keep in kilometer because later you'll cancel out. 6.34 times 10 to the 3 kilometer. Kilometer, kilometer gone. All that left is N. So you press calculator properly, you will get uh, 60.19, somewhere there. Keep extra decimals. It's good because you're going to use the N in a further calculation. Okay, so this is our 60.19. Okay, so let's go here now. So this will be 3 pi 60.19 cube over GT. So G is our constant, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. You're not sure where to find it, use your calculator or go check the first page of every pass here. Ah, then you will see that. Time given is 27.3. Whoa, this is in days. We need everything to be in SI units. So convert days. One day got 24 hours. One hour got 60 minutes. One minute got 60 seconds. Multiply again. It's a long conversion chain. Okay, there we go. Uh, don't forget the square. GT square. Uh, this whole thing is square. Oh, this one. First time I did it, I forgot to square. I was like, why is it so weird? So this should give us a value about 5537.6 density of the earth. Or you could round it off to about 5 point... Eh, how many decimals should we keep? Uh? You know, I think I'll keep... Not decimal. 3 SF. 5.54 times 10 to the 3. You know why? Because... I look at this and I'm like, they give us 27.3. That's 3 SF. So I think if they give me in 3 SF, I would want to probably keep it in 3 SF. So this is A1 mark. Okay. The other mark will be coming from the end value. Did you know how to find the end value by dividing both of them? And lastly, substitution, correct values into your equation that was given to you earlier. Then that is your last one. Okay, so that's all for this first question. It's kind of a good show and calculation question. Make sure you know to how to stay calm and derive this thing especially, and you'll be okay. So that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.